And that, that's also a positive statement, though. That's yeah. more positive than the other one. Yeah. <laughs> um, Paul asked um, about Loom. So the, the first question is, uh, it's a two-parter. Uh, when will Loom be GA? I guess that's going to be a short answer. Uh, but maybe a longer answer on what do you see of the f uh, what do you see as the future of reactive programming in Java going forward? Yeah, so this is a great question. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a controversial answer, which some people will like and some people will hate. Um, I think Loom is going to kill reactive programming. I think uh, we are going to realize very quickly that reactive programming was a transitional technology. It was a reaction to a problem uh, that we had, and when that problem is taken away, uh, it will become obvious that this is not the solution. The reactive is not the solution we want, and and I'll I'll, I'll explain because I, I don't want to just make a provocative statement and then move on to a, a different a different topic. Uh, the problem with reactive is it gets you one good thing. It gets you this event driven model that allows you to decouple computations from threads, so you can have a lot of asynchronous operations going on way more than the number of threads that, that, that you have. But the cost of it is really high. Uh, basically, you have to give up so many things that the language already gives you, you give up control flow statements, you give up being able to write simple loops. Uh, you give up uh, having, you know, being able to sequentially debug your code. You give up um, being able to get clear stack traces of uh, how did I get to this point where, you know, I, I um, where I experienced this error. All of those things come for free uh, if you're programming with straightforward, you know, uh, sequential code. And uh, reactive frameworks take that all away from you. So they give you one good thing, but they take away a bunch of, of good things that we were all used to. And uh, if your code doesn't work, good luck debugging it. Um, and what Loom does is says, well, the real bug was not the programming model. The bug was that threads were too expensive. And so I could only create 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. I can't create a million. And so um, the uh, um, if, if we just solve that problem of, let's make it cheaper to create lots of threads, then people will write just ordinary straightforward sequential code and it will, using the control flow uh, you know, techniques they know from the language and using the debuggers that they've already got in their toolbox and you know, uh, you, getting clean stack traces when there's an error and it's gonna be great. And I think a lot of people will look at reactive and say, Boy, that was you know th that was that was a cost and benefit that were not in line. So, do you think there's um, there's still a you know the, the, a lot of people using this, or a lot of projects using the same technologies all can do the for different slightly different reasons, right? With slightly different trade offs. Uh, uh, apparently, for all of the projects, uh, the technology comes up ahead, but the reasons might be different. So, do you think there's a, a niche that remains? Uh, so, for example, just to pick something totally unrelated, um, OSGI has always had a small but stable market share, right? Uh, right? So they, it has always been there. It has never has seen mass adoption, but everybody uses it. But there's always been a core of people who rely on it and who use it um, for the feature specifically, like dynamically appearing and disappearing bundles for stuff like that. They need that. And they're just going to stick to it uh, because sure. that's the technology that, that provides it. Do you think that there's a niche in reactive programming that um, Loom cannot fulfill and that will stay? Um, quite, quite probably, right? Because the reactive frameworks at this point are reasonably mature. Um, you know, they've already reinvented the wheel, right? If you look at the, if you look at most re reactive APIs, they've reinvented all the control flow concepts of the language in the form of APIs so that people can express the kind of things that you know um, that I was I was just talking about. And there are people who like those APIs and will continue to use them, and that's great. That's fine. Uh, but I'm more thinking about what are we asking ordinary programmers to do? Uh, and you know, the easiest thing for an ordinary programmer to think about is writing and analyzing straight sequential code. That is much easier and, and they're used to it and there are tools for it. And uh, so that should be plan A. Doing something weird should be plan B. But uh, <laughs> for a long time, reactive intruded uh, to where a lot of ordinary programmers had to deal with it because it was the only way to get the throughput that they needed, you know, from the technology we had. Um, yeah. and, and so I, I think it probably will go back to its niche. Um, and you know, like an, another really uh, powerful example of that, what Loom does is um, so. 
if you look at all the workarounds that we have to do because threads are expensive, right? So you have to have thread pools, right? Uh, now the JDK added thread pool support in Java 5. So thankfully no one has to write their own thread pool implementation anymore, but you still have to use them. And thread pools don't interact very nicely with thread locals. So uh, if you have, and, and thread locals are not something you can prevent libraries from using. So you can like call off into some library and maybe it sticks a thousand thread local values in your in your thread and all of those are pinned in memory until your thread pool shuts down and you had no idea that was going to happen because you were just making this method call into some library and we thought it was going to do something for you. Um, it, with Loom, because threads are cheap to create, that means we don't have to keep them around for as long as, you know, uh, artificially the way we do with thread pools. Um, and as a result, you don't have this interaction between thread pools and thread locals uh, because you start up a virtual thread, you do the one thing that it was supposed to do, you tear it down and any thread local values that had been set during that time go away with it. So there were a lot of pain points that um, we had already been experiencing as a result of working around the fact that threads were expensive to create. Uh, Reactive was one of them, but there, there were others too. And I think Loom will, uh, I, think, I think it'll be one of those things where you don't realize how much weight you were carrying until it's taken off your shoulders and you <laughs> say, hey, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Um... Specifically, as you said, uh, there might be still be areas around where this still where Reactive still remains a solution, but most likely a large part of the of the programmers will just stick to the default programming model and will have will be able to use the resources that they want um, to a much larger degree until something else 